let's put the past behind us now and let's talk about the present <laughs> and the future with the Sky Raiders of Abarax, which, uh, as of me talking to you right now, is sitting at $405,000 raised on this Kickstarter, uh, which is... I mean, it's there's all there's so much to talk about, but we have uh, you know a brand new setting for five e with a bunch of folks involved in it. But before we dive into all that, why don't you just tell people what Sky Raiders of Barracks is? Well, Sky Raiders is very much um, Sky Raiders is very much uh, a world that we want to visit. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of been a, a theme for us uh, down through the years that when if it's a place we want to go, then we will create that world so that we can go there and bring others along with us. This actually, uh, I think, is the first um, big role playing setting that Laura and I have designed since Dragonlance. Mm-hmm. And we're very much taking on the, the decades, really, of experience in games that we've had since then and bringing them into this uh, into this new world um we, the the world itself uh, I, dead gentleman i think said that <laughs> everything's better with pirates everything's better with pirates <laughs> sure. and we've always been fans of the pirate genre and uh and our and love the idea of bringing that you know very much into the dnd uh role and the um, role-playing realm mm-hmm. and, and and we love the romance of the idea of flying ships well sure. we both love flying tracy was at one point a sailplane pilot and oh, so wow that that feeling of soaring mm-hmm. unaided in the sky there's nothing quite like it mm-hmm. and so to bring that into a role-playing setting that's kind of our homage to that that and i think that also it's the romance of horizons mm-hmm. for us um, there's there's something compelling about the idea of, uh, that there is something beyond our sight, something just over the hill and something past the horizon of the ocean. And, and the, the wonder of what that might be and what that might bring to us if we could cross that horizon. Mm-hmm. So the story that's actually behind this, this world is um, that there's this, this island, this remote island, that has become the dumping ground for empires and kingdoms around the world. It's a place um, where the people that are not wanted, uh, who are troublesome or troublemakers Mm -hmm. or- um, Criminal or political prisoners. Or political prisoners, all are dumped into this remote, this remote place. People have asked us if, if, if we're looking at it like Australia once was, and in some ways, yeah, very much it is. But you, then you take it one step further and you go, so what if they had sent all these people here and then just simply abandoned it? Mm. Just quit coming. And it's not, and mm. we don't know actually whether they abandoned it or whether some cataclysmic event has happened in the world at large. No but one knows because no they're knows stuck here. Because they're cut off from the outside world. And it's been centuries since any of these arrow ships have visited this island. Uh, and they've been cut off from knowledge of the general world. And the seas are unsailable. And the seas are unsailable. There's, the, yeah, that's there a whole reasons. other problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's, I mean, you know, you had me at pirates, and then you bring these sky pirates in, you know, isolationist cutoff areas. Uh, th- I mean, this is all obviously a, I mean, we've just very high level already have talked about this. And this sounds like a pretty, it also feels like a lived in world. And I, like just with a little bit of conversation we've had, which is definitely something, you know, it makes it feel more real and you can get more immersed in things when you have this kind of backstory of what's going on. So, all right, we've got some very high level descriptions. Obviously, the both of you are involved, but I saw by on the Kickstarter page, which by the way, folks, there's a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. A couple hours left to go here, but a whole bunch of other really awesome people are tied to this as well. Yeah, Joe Manganello is uh, uh, actually a really good friend of ours. He's a big Dragonlance fan. I've seen a listen when I'm in the process of tracking down news. Every time someone will be like, did you see Joe Manganiello said this thing about Dragonlance? What does it mean? Let's go figure it out. So uh, <laughs> n- no surprise to see 
to see him involved in this, which is so. What's his What's his role in the in the Kickstarter? Well, actually, he's working as a consultant for uh, with us, and so we'll be actually ta- sending materials to him and getting commentary back from him as to things that he'd like to see changed. I'm very anxious, actually, and excited <laughs> to see um, some of yeah. his take on uh, the Dragonborn. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, obviously, that's a, he's near and dear to that. So yeah, and we have this whole whole background actually within this world as to where the Dragonborn have come from and what their society is like. Um, uh, the, the, the land that we come from is uh, highly detailed. This actually fairly small patch, um, of the Eastern end of this Island, uh, is, uh, where the, where the prisons had once been. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it's detailed history, what has happened there, um, and, and how these people have, uh, how these once prisoners and their keepers who are also abandoned here. Um, have have somehow uh, managed to an uneasy alliance and um, uh, on, survived and survived yeah. and with their own with their own cultures um, in these various places on this uh, on this uh, island. The the interesting thing about that is that it's it's mostly detailed to that level to give all of our characters a place to come from. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the great changing event that takes place fairly soon in all of this is is the rediscovery of the arrow ships and a means of getting off the island mm. to explore past that horizon that is so important to us. And yet there's a lot to explore on the island. Yeah. You know, it just depends on how long you want to be there. There's plenty. And uh, I saw it was a stretch goal. I saw Larry Elmore also uh, tied to this, which is pretty exciting for fans of classic covers and things of, that, of those nature. I called uh, I called up Larry because I wanted to, hoping he could be involved in our project. And um, he said, "Well, I'm just finishing up my last two commissions right now, and I've, I've, I'm not taking any more commissions. I want, I, I think I'd like to start just painting things I want to paint mm-hmm. rather than, than doing any more commission work. And I said, well, Larry, I think you've earned that. Absolutely. And, and I, I think that's wonderful for you. He said, but then he said, but I'll do one more for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, bless him. He's agreed to do uh, to do a cover for us and, and and to be involved in the project. Larry was hugely involved in Dragonlance uh, in the beginning, uh, donating all kinds of art that he did on his in his own time, actually, oh, to wow. help us sell the project into the company. So it's 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 very exciting for us to have him be part of this as well. It it kind of gives us that tie to that lineage of. Uh, uh, of Dragonlance. We've also got Matt Stowicki, who's mm-hmm. doing a cover for us. He was very excited, actually. I got an email from him yesterday. Oh, good. Yeah, he was saying, yeah, I, I was going to wait until the Kickstarter ended, but I was just so excited. We, we, we have to get together. I want to get started on this. Uh, he, of course, did an, mm-hmm. a lot of the covers, uh, a lot of the indie covers, but he did a lot of the covers for our books, uh, hardback books later on in the Dragonlance mm-hmm. series as well. So, we're, we're certainly excited to have him here with us and Carl Prusser, mm-hmm. um, who is also a tremendous Dragonlance fan and who did the soundtrack uh, for the Dragonlance movie. Yes, that I have um, seen. So that's one thing that I, I did make the effort to find that. So Yes. Well, the Dragonlance, the Dragonlance movie has an incredible cast, uh, a great script, mm-hmm. and uh, a and wonderful, wonderful soundtrack. I just love the soundtrack that Carl did for uh, for the film and um um i think if you just listen to it it's a great movie <laughs> um, all right so uh, when i talked with carl i said you know i, I might it'd be really interesting to explore the idea of doing music specifically for this world mm-hmm. and um i said we got this kickstarter coming up and carl said I tell you what, I'm going to do a theme for you. Nice. I'm not going to charge you for it. I'm just going to do a theme for you, and uh, and, and tell me a little bit about the world. And I told we, I told him about the prisoners. I told him about them escaping and and you know, through flight, uh, you know, trying to ex- find their way back home. 
mm-hmm. uh, to a, a legendary home that they've only heard about. And bless him, he came up with this amazing theme that seemed to have this whole evolution in the sound of of the music. And I, I was just so wonderful to hear that. And, and he said, then he's, I'm sorry, what are you saying? Well, we got to use it on our. And we, we got to, he said, go ahead. Yeah, we use it for the Kickstarter. But then when we started doing the video for the Kickstarter, he says, Tell, send me the send me the video file and I'll score your video. <sighs> That's awesome. So we have this Hollywood, you know, uh, music composers, uh, soundtrack composer who scored our uh, our Kickstarter video and who is really excited about the idea of doing additional music and for us. And the app. We're so excited for the that. app and for the world. So, so we're super excited to have this amazing team of talent with us and and of course our our partners in the our prime. partners yeah, yeah. The, well, there's actually a quartet of us <laughs> working yeah. on this project laura and i of course are working on uh on on the uh, on the role-playing project but beyond that we've also got uh kim and joe bory mm-hmm. uh kim bory uh and kim and joe actually met at electronic arts that's oh, where wow. they were working. <laughs> they, were, they were working together. Uh, Kim is uh, an amazing uh, UI UX designer, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a 3D modeler. And so she's actually going Super to be... Super talented. She's the one that made our Kickstarter project look so unbelievably beautiful. Yeah, yeah. you can see it on the, on the Kickstarter page. Just, she did a beautiful job of of presenting uh, our, uh, our our amazing project, and bringing together artists from like all over the world to mm-hmm. get the initial art. Yeah, it was quite su- quite a surprise to me that uh, Mario, I think, mm-hmm. is uh, who did the cover art, the main art that you see on the mm-hmm. website, sure, um, is actually uh, an artist from Indonesia. Oh wow! Which by some strange coincidence is where I spent a year and a half back in the seventies in uh, as a missionary. And so um, <laughs> it was actually kind of great to talk to her uh, yeah. e- email back and forth with her in her language. Yeah. So, I, um, well, uh, yeah, it's uh, Kim Bory has been doing the, the graphic side of this and uh, as, uh, as well as we'll be doing the 3d art, our current stretch goal actually is a skyship. Um, right, I saw that. Yeah, printable skyship, miniature size, so you'll be able to use it in game. Yeah, we're, uh, that's the one I really want. Yeah, that's the one that Laura really wants. <laughs> sure. And then her husband, Joe Bory. I um, we we actually knew them before this, but I'd I'd worked with Joe uh, at the Void, mm-hmm. uh, doing uh, 3D experiences. Um, and uh, so he's actually going to be doing the work on the app and is doing the work on the app. Uh, right he's now. a freaking genius. He is amazing. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. And all of us are gamers. Sure. Um, which, which actually brings me to the really, uh, for what for me is the exciting part of all of this is that we're designing a game for gamers. Right. Um, from all the experience that we've had in gaming, um, uh, I some people it's been really funny uh, we have an app that's associated with this uh, with this game and all of our game materials are designed to work with the app uh, which does some really amazing things um, you can some magical things some very magical things it actually turns uh, our game books in, and game objects into magical items um, uh, our dice scroll, for example, mm-hmm. um, you, uh, you have this dice, dice rolling scroll that you can unroll and it's it's got a place to hold your miniatures and it's got a place to hold your dice in the other end. But the images that are on the surface of it, you can actually, are images of historic figures mm-hmm. in the world. And if you point your app at them, one's a historian, one's a botanist, yeah, the app knows where you are in your adventure. It also knows what your stats are for your character. Mm-hmm. And it will then figure out for you just how much information your character knows about the history of this place or what this object is or how it works. 
And the amazing thing about that is then you get to skip that moment at the table where your player looks at you as the GM and says, well, what do I know about this? And, the, and then the GM tells you what you know. Instead, you'll be able to say to the rest of the table, I know this about this. And you won't have to have that kind of awkward take you out of the play moment. And, and the whole app is designed to further the play at the table. There are a lot of, I shouldn't say there are a lot. There are a few people who said, oh, I don't want to use an app. And we're like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That is fine. It, it's made to be playable without it. But there will be magical things that you'll miss if you if you don't. Yeah, so just for those, if you're looking at the Kickstarter page, this is called the Living Tome System. And there's a really great image that shows a GM's kind of, well, I guess, a phone or device versus the player. And it has a little section for the DM to read aloud. And it has very clear branding, secret, do not share. And then it says, pick a player. And then if you look at the player, it has a little bit for the player. And then it says, secret, do not share. And basically says that this player is now possessed which is things, and again, to further this point, <laughs> there's a lot of this kind of stuff that I've seen, and I'm sure so many other people have seen, where you're at the table and you really want to convey something to one player, and you don't want to have to have that. Everybody pretend you didn't hear that he's possessed, or that she's possessed, or they're possessed, and like act completely normal. Please do not metagame that I very clearly told you something, that this person is possessed. It's like, do I try to like hand scribble a note and then hand it to you and then at that point everybody's like well clearly something's up because you just handed a note to them but if everybody's in an app looking at stuff and then all of a sudden you get a little pop-up and it's just like oh okay now i know this is a thing and i can just use this going forward this is the kind of things that are going to take all of our campaigns and our games to the next level and this is what i can see truly being a genesis of where we go in the future, we have this technology. Why not integrate it? And I wouldn't be surprised if something along these lines becomes a standard that we see going forward. And I mean, as we've heard, you know, with Dragonlance set the standard for bringing in novels to accompany adventures, an app system that allows us to interact and work with all the things around us might become, this might be what we see as the start of this to the forward of all of our campaigns and things going forward. So yeah, and the and the important thing for us is that we keep the the play mm -hmm. on the table. Sure, we we don't. The last thing we want is to have you know a bunch of people sitting around the table, everyone staring at their glass. Right. That's, sure. That's not a game. That's you know mm -hmm. that's all of us on Facebook. Yep. What what we what the whole point of our design actually is to is to use the app as as an informational sort of a device to give the player the information that the character knows mm -hmm. so that they can play it on the table and right. mini games and like and mini games and one of the things that we do show in the app for example is uh, picking a lock sure which is actually a game in in the app mm -hmm. so that so that you know it it, it takes into account of course, the complexity of the lock, and it takes into account your ability scores as to how difficult that is, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But how many times have we got into the game? Yeah, okay, I picked the lock. I don't get it. Yep. Yeah, I, I you know, it's and much it's... more fun to be working on it, right? Than, uh, than to just kind of say it happened. And I saw there's some other things too. Uh, we talked about the music, right? Obviously, music is part of the app, and it looks like it's going to have music that can change, you know, if you're transitioning from like a a nice overarching travel to all of a sudden now we're in combat we can change up our musical score another thing that's huge too for a lot of people that can be time consuming or hard to understand is plotting around on a map right i need to get from point a to point b on a map i also may have a sky ship how do i take into account travel time and things like that well i've got an app that can help ease a lot of that pain for me and again it's a tool to help facilitate the game, not to replace the games. That's the thing that I think we were both trying to express here. Mm -hmm. It's to improve. And if you don't want to, you can just toss it to the side and just play your game traditionally however you want. But there are fun tools for you to use. I know I talk all the time about mini games within a game are some of the most fun things people can do. And rather than making up some sort of dice rolling mini game to pick a lock... 
why not have a mini game to pick a lock? Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and since we're using it as an AR device, mm -hmm. you are actually looking through the device. Sure. So it is still keeping you in the world. And so if you have the map that's spread in front of you and you look through the device and it shows you a path across the map, you may be the only one seeing that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to say, okay, well, we, we need to go this way guys, and they can believe you or not. Right. It's, it, it just adds to the whole idea of immersive play. And that's, you know, there've been a lot of people that are concerned that we are trying to move the game into the app. That's actually the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're trying to enhance the game on the table through the app. Mm -hmm. So all of that is just so very exciting for us. And we're uh, once our systems develop, you know, hopefully we'll be able to uh, let other people use that. I know that in our planning in the deep future is to uh, get to an SDK mm -hmm. uh, and an actually a, a public facing SDK so that people will be able to design their own as well. That's fantastic. That's, that is that's a that's our dream that's sure. our dream and but it is on our road everyone else but it is but it is on the roadmap uh, yeah. going forward that and we're also offering some enhancements to um uh, to 5e itself mm -hmm. uh, and again like as with everything else uh, use it or not sure um, because uh, everybody should play the way they want to play um but we are um we are uh, doing an enhancement that uh, we're calling um, ancestry and culture as mm -hmm. opposed to race, mm -hmm. um, which um, we think actually is going to give players more variety in terms of crafting their character. Um, and we're also uh, suggesting uh, uh, moving charisma, or not charisma, uh, charisma is its whole other thing that we're working on right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, alignment right Moving yes alignment, alignment has been obviously in the past it was very restrictive we all know that mm -hmm. and in fifth edition as it stands now it kind of feels like an afterthought because nothing there's not a lot of not many things use alignment and it is very fluid um almost to the point where I feel like if you didn't even have alignment in fifth edition I don't think the game would suffer for it so it would change to that but that being said, a lot of people clamor to have it and they want it to be more impactful and usable. So I saw this. This is this ethos system we're talking about, correct? This yes, adjustment to ethos alignment. System. So what well, are you talking about? Ethos is that? actually an interesting uh, uh, concept for us. Uh, and I think interesting in general. Um, the uh, um, ethos starts actually from the idea that evil is something that we use to describe other people. Mm. Um, we, we don't describe ourselves as being evil. Right. We understand ourselves perfectly and, are, and justify our actions based on our own ethos. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea of good and evil in, in terms of ethos, I think uh, we thought needed to be explored in a different way. And so um, what, what we're working with now is um, a cultural ethos and a personal ethos, which are actually two, two ethos that are kind of in conflict inside the character themselves. Mm -hmm. um, cultural ethos is the ethos of the culture that, in which you're raised, mm -hmm. which kind of gives you a, a value set that works within that community. And personal ethos is more like your internal compass and, how you, and what you follow. But rather than good and evil, uh, the way we've come to look at it, um, lawful and uh, neutral and chaotic, I think still work for us. Mm -hmm. But instead, in the other axis, what we're looking at is inclusive versus exclusive. And inclusive means that you are willing to consider um, other points of view mm -hmm. as opposed to your own and to be inclusive of other points of view and the validity of other points of view. Exclusive is more along the lines of, I have a central core knowledge against which I judge everything else that's outside of myself. And, and I saw that I see there's a class adjustment too. Is that something that I saw or, or professions, I believe? 
Yes, yeah, and we're also and moving toward professions, which gives us a little bit better control, I think, especially because people change professions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, uh, not you know, once a cleric, always a cleric. Well, you can multi-class, but um, it more reflects the mo this modern world mm -hmm. because yeah. people don't always stay in the same job anymore. Right, it used sure. to be they'd stay in the same job for thirty years. They don't do that. Right. And this is and this is actually very core to what we're doing in terms of story, because um, nobody on this island knows how to fly a ship. <laughs> OK. And so to to gain that aeronaut profession mm -hmm. and more particularly the 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 sub professions within that, the specializations within that profession, um, uh, flying an aeroship is is a complex thing, very much like sailing a, a tall ship was a very complex thing. Mm -hmm. And so there are many different parts that have to be kind of all working in unison together in order to get the ship to properly fly, maintain trim, and, <laughs> and move. Sure. Um, and so uh, we actually have that, uh, th these professions and these specializations within that so that you can in fact learn to do something else during during the course of the game and maybe it's a profession that you know maybe you want to leave this whole uh, uh this whole acolyte thing behind and and just be a harpist mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on well when you I, say harpist, when I say harpist, you have to explain what that is. <laughs> the 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 central uh, one of the central components uh, of an aeroship is uh, the sylph engine, which mm -hmm. is a magical engine that that actually brings lift mm -hmm. and, and some orientation to the ship itself. It it drives the sylph keel, which interacts with uh, the general aether of the world to uh, uh, to provide a medium. Mm -hmm. uh, through which it sails and, and the silf engine itself provides the lift against that ether as well to to lift the ship up but the aether engine has uh, is a is a complex thing mm -hmm. requiring the motion of several reflective plates that are situated around it and because of that all of those are adjusted by a series of lines uh, of ropes uh, and cables mm -hmm. that are all arranged in a specific order that's called the ship's harp. And it's called oh. the ship's harp also because the engine itself resonates back through those lines and kind of gives a sound. Uh, and a harpist can actually know how well the engine is adjusted based on the sound that the lines are giving back to them. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, there's so much to dive into just from that just that one little piece one little aspect of the ship you could obviously see the amount of detail and care and love for this world and the different aspects of it poured into and we're just talking about an aspect of a part of a ship right we don't we haven't even touched on the whole ship the rest of the world the story that we're going to explore here and you know one thing i realized we didn't talk about is that there's two books in this Kickstarter. That's one of the first things I probably should have brought up, but it's not just a campaign guide per se. You have both kind of a player guide and a game master guide, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Because that horizon is so important to us, um, we, we, we give in the player's book their understanding of the world, mm -hmm. the, of their corner of the world. So they know where Haven is, they know where Cinder is, they know where Stronghold is, and they know roughly who is there and, and what can be found there. Um, but then, but then they, we take flight, and now we have to discover the world beyond here because we just don't know. And that very much is the province of the Game Master's book. The, uh, I think we, someone asked us how wide the, um, uh, the Arrhenius coast is, and uh, it's about 150 miles across. The <laughs> island itself turns out to be around 450 miles. It's a sizable island. It's a sizable sure. island. Um, but then the, the as we peel back the horizon, as we pass this horizon, there are a whole, there's a whole area of exploration that is unknown to the players that the, 
that the game master is going to need to understand. And that's very much the province of the, uh, uh, of the game master's book is to come to an understanding of where that is. Mm -hmm. But one of the other aspects too of the, uh, uh, of the app mm -hmm. is to be able to tell the game master things that the game master doesn't know. So that the, even for the game master in our, uh, in our world, there are hidden things to explore and, and new places to go and to learn about. So yeah, at one, one of the stretch goals, you talk about the complexity of this, one of the stretch goals for the app was multiplayer ship flying. <laughs> and so everyone will need to take a station Okay, good. I mean, that's get, great involving everybody rather than just yeah. a captain yeah. or to a pilot. To get the ship to fly. And they will each have to do something different in order to make the ship properly function. With varying levels of skill, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully not in the storm. To the storm. <laughs> and I, I think we talked a little beforehand, but timeline we're looking to deliver currently. Again, obviously, we don't know what shipping delays and then all sorts of crazy stuff happens with the world as we stand but november 2022 is the current timeline for publication it is the current timeline for our, our publication we uh as many people are very much aware of um difficulties in terms of worldwide shipping and mm -hmm. fulfillment uh, from that so um we're actually working very hard to it's more expensive but we're actually looking very closely at uh, domestic production. Oh wow! Okay. Here in the United States, uh, to uh, in, in order to mitigate those those delivery issues. Um, as I say, it's it's more expensive to do, but we want to make yeah, sure so, that um, fly fly it in instead well, yes, of yes, air freight's ship, also very freight. expensive. Um, sure. But these are the things that seem to get things done and we want to be able to deliver when we say we will so. yeah it's important to us that we get this into everybody's hands it costs properly. more but it's worth it yeah sure uh well i mean this like i said this has been an absolute honor to be involved in this interview before we bring ourselves to an official close is there anything else you'd like to let uh everyone out there know about what you've got going on about Sky Raiders. We'll give you the floor one last time and then we'll, we'll, we'll close the interview out. Well, if there's anything that we would like to say, I think at this point is um, how grateful we are to everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. Not just, uh, not just in this Kickstarter, but down through the years um, for coming along with us on this journey and making this journey possible for us. We, we couldn't have done this without everyone being there with us and supporting us to, to make these things happen. Um, and it's a journey that all of us share. Um, every time you go on an adventure, uh, if, it's, uh, if, it, uh, if we've been there before, then uh, we're glad to have you add to it when you come. Um, whenever you pick up a book, you make our uh, worlds live and, and breathe again. And we're grateful for that every time that that, that happens. Sky Raiders is very much the culmination of uh, a lifetime of adventure that we've enjoyed because of you. And so we're pretty excited to, to invite you to join us one more time here and to, uh, to uh, stand on the quarter deck <laughs> and rise above and uh, and head to the winds, to the storm. One more time. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, well, thank you both so much uh, for this. Uh, I hope this will be one of many conversations we have uh, in the future. But uh, I, once again, folks, pinned comment as well as top of the video description, a link to Sky Raiders. You still have about 69-ish hours left to go to back it. So jump on over there and let's get that mini STL file for that ship to be a thing that we can all have in our hands. So... Thank you both, and I will see everyone in the next video. Thank you.